An influential leader of the Egyptian Islamic Jihad organization calls for an end to violence. What are the reasons behind the change and what could this mean for armed Islamic groups worldwide? This is Inside Story. Hello, I am Hashim Ahalbara. In a remarkable turnabout, an influential jailed leader of the Islamic Jihad organization in Egypt has called for a change in jihadi operations. Sayyid Imam now considers the killing of civilians contrary to the percepts of Islam. The move is a departure from the organization's previous strategy that preached violence as the only means to achieve the group's objectives. The face of global jihadism could change, and the reason is this man. Sayyid Imam Sharif, a former surgeon and one of the founders of the Egyptian Islamic Jihad. Twenty years ago, he wrote basic principles in making preparations for jihad, in which he outlined the doctrine of jihad. The book was soon adopted by all the jihadist organizations in the world as their theological guideline. One of them was Al-Qaeda. They interpreted his writings to legitimize attacks on judges, lawyers, and soldiers. Now, in jail since 2001, he has issued a revision of his books. In it, he attacks excesses in jihad and reminds the jihadists that Islam forbids killing people on the grounds of their nationality, skin, sect, or religion. He said those who used his rulings, known as fatwas, to kill innocents in Iraq and Afghanistan were wrong. Muntasir Azayat, the Egyptian lawyer of Islamist activists, thinks the new revision will have far-reaching impact. The importance of the revisions lies in their global impact. Some say, why should he issue such a statement when there is no violence in the country? But the man has a global stature. He was the man who made the jihadist movements an international phenomenon. Egyptian authorities widely publicized the revision. It was hailed by official newspapers as a turning point in the thinking of Egypt's radical movement. While the document was endorsed by some of Said's former colleagues, others rejected the revisions and said were the results of long years of torture and imprisonment. But the new declaration against violence written by Sayyid Sharif is already triggering a debate among those who are looking for justification of their violent acts around the world. While well, joining our discussion today, our guests in Cairo, the Yarashwan, a political Islam and Islamist groups expert at Al Haram Center for Political and Strategic Studies. In Washington, D.C., John Esposito, university professor and founding director of Prince Al Walid bin Talal Center for Muslim Christian Understanding at Georgetown University. And in London, Abdul Wahab Al Afendi, a senior research fellow at the Center for the Study of Democracy, University of Westminster. Welcome, gentlemen. Let me start by asking the Arashwan in Cairo. The, uh, this is a man who has issued a document where he says, those who are using my fatwas to justify the killing of innocents are wrong. Well, after 20 years, somebody has been wrong, either the man who wrote the document or those who misread the document. How do you explain that? I think we can explain what is happening now of revisions coming from the Egyptian Jihad by the same way to explain what already happened in the same country 10 years ago by the other uh, Islamist group called the Jama'a al Islamiyah or the Egyptian Islamic group. Uh, ten years ago, we had in July 1997 an initiative for stopping violence coming from mainly the Jama'a al Islamiyah leaders, but it was signed also by um, historical, some of the historical leaders of the Egyptian Jihad. And from this moment started what we call today revisions. It uh, started by stopping violence, but in the road we had from the Jama'a Islamiyah uh, 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 four books published in January 2002, and till now we had already more than 25 books. For the Egyptian Jihad, they are uh, w uh, walking in the same road, but the difference is that the Egyptian Jihad is more divided than Jama'a Islamiyah. There is no uh, uh, central 
organization uh, 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 for this movement. It was not the case of Jamal Islamiyah, which is very unified uh, movement. Uh, for the Egyptian Jihad and for Jamal Islamiyah, the reason, the main reason, the historical reason, if you want, is that in all the Islamic history for the 14th century, we had already in many times what we call today the radical extremist groups. But they appeared for a while, for decades or two decades, two decades, three decades, and then they disappeared. And going back to transform it to be what we call today the moderate Islamic groups, but the ideas are still alive. This is a kind of historic, historical mechanism. And now we are seeing the Egyptian jihad, the Egyptian Jamaa Islamiyah within this mechanism. But the direct, the direct reasons uh, concerning the Jamaa Islamiyah jihad, I think one of them is to be to mature. Those, we'll those guys, the when they wrote, We'll definitely go back to the reasons and then the mechanism that have prompted such change. But let me ask, first of all, uh, Alafandi in London, this is the most senior ideologue of Al the Islamic Jihad. Do you really think that he's genuine in what he presented or he was just shifting tactics now that he's in jail? No, uh, well, first of all, there's something surreal in us sitting here discussing the rantings of an aging uh, prisoner. And this shows to what extent authority has shifted in Egyptian society that people hang are hanging over the words of some uh, old prisoner. But uh, it's also, I think, the, this man himself, he has already been away from the jihad for uh, over 10 years because he has left, he has resigned from the leadership of the jihad uh, over differences with al-Zawahiri in 1994. And he has not been actually party to the jihad. True, as you said in the introduction, his books has been used uh, by the jihadists for uh, training purposes, but this is like uh, the famous death of the author. This, uh, the books have um, taken a life of their own, even though he disavowed them. Now the question is, he himself have tried in this uh, revision to, uh, to um, uh, uh, try to, uh, self-consciously to try to speak about authority, whether he has authority or not. And he was self-deprecating, saying that this is not a fatwa. I do not claim authority. I do not claim leadership. But of course, he does. He does uh, claim leadership. And I think this will work probably within uh, the circles, because the, within this circle, this surrealism is there, like the young Hegelians of the past or the European Marxists of the 1970s. There is a dialogue going on within these insular groups, uh, which only they will understand and will relate to. But as far as the uh, community at large, it looks sometimes like uh, just riddles. But then John in Washington DC, this is some, a man who wrote basic principles for the preparation of jihad, a pillar for those who issued and started the struggle, uh, the armed struggle against their own regimes and in, in, in their own country, something unprecedented in the Arab and the Islamic world. Do you think this is a man who is recanting his past calls for armed struggle or I just think this could somebody be a man who's, who's reflecting on the realities that that, that terrorism works in the sh in the short term, but not in the long term. And so, for example, if he looks at Egypt, uh, the, the fact is that at the end of the day, uh, Egypt is no less autocratic, uh, no less authoritarian than it was in the past. If you look at Palestine and Iraq, while terrorism may have seemed to be attractive to some in the short term, in Israel and Palestine, it legitimated uh, Israeli excesses. Uh, the Palestinian situation is worse rather than better. Uh, in Iraq, the same thing uh, in the country, you see the country breaking apart. He's also a man who's had a chance to reflect on what is the reality, and that is that uh, the, the acts of terrorism killing innocent uh, victims is against Islamic law, has always been against Islamic law. So I think it may be a testimony to uh, uh, a reflection on uh, reality uh, in terms of uh, uh, both at the authenticity and credit and legitimacy of acts yes. of terrorism, but also their practical value. Very briefly, gentlemen, is this going to produce a major breakthrough in the Islamic world, knowing that up to this moment we haven't received any uh, response from the senior members of the Islamic Jihad and all the radical movements in the Arab world? Yeah. We, we had already a response. We had a, a response uh, in last June. Uh, Said Imam Sharif in this moment uh, issued a statement in which he uh, discussed only if he had the authority as a prisoner to make judgments or fatwa or not. 
And uh, next month, it was in May, next month we saw Ayman al-Zawari himself commenting uh, this statement without mentioning the name of, of uh, Sayyid Imam, but criticizing uh, his uh, ideas, saying that all the uh, thinkers in Islamic history were in prison, uh, and not uh, yeah. issuing, didn't issue. We'll definitely yes. go back to, to Osama bin Laden, Ayman al-Zawahiri, and al-Qaeda. But let me ask uh, uh, al-Afandi. Mr. al-Afandi, uh, is this something that could be considered as a severe blow to Islamic Jihad in Egypt? Well, it is not a, it's a blow, but not a severe blow at the moment, because as you know, in these movements, there's two levels of rhetoric. There is a low, uh, this is theological religious rhetoric of the kind now uh, Imam, uh, Sayyid Imam is voicing, and there is a kind of nationalist rhetoric. Now, he is relying a lot here on the religious rhetoric, but the subtext is also uh, nationalist, that the, uh, he was saying that we are too weak. Now, this argument uh, has been discussed by Jamal al Islamiyah before, actually, one of the, the issues, and he actually gives a dangerous uh, uh, idea in his, in his, because the Jamal al Islamiyah have said before that jihad should be conducted regardless of the consequences. Now he has tried to turn this around and say we should not be we should not care about the consequences, so we shouldn't have jihad. Uh, and now the, we don't know how this will reach, how far will reach among. I'm sure that some of the jihadists will listen to this argument because he used the same language he used in his earlier books, and this some will relate to. But I could see from the internet chat rooms and from the replies that a lot of them are still skeptical. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Time for a short break. When we come back, we talk about the fallout of the jihad latest revisionist move on Al-Qaeda future strategy. Stay with us.